Hello YouTube and today we're installing a Chinese diesel heater. So we've all seen these things before, uh, uh, typical on a boat installation. This one is an Eberspacher Airtronic D2 um, and it's showing error code 72 at the moment. So the question in my mind is do we get it fixed? Or do we look at an alternative? Finding error codes for Eberspacher products is not difficult, and this website reveals it's a short circuit on the overheating sensor. The basic repair is £175 if it's just the combination sensor, but if it's the control box, then we can add another £494 onto that. So the price of repairing the Airtronic D2, um, or sending it away for repair, uh, it is possible to look into repairing it yourself, but we'd be having a machine which is already quite old, um, and has already run many hours and you'll just be throwing good money after bad I've had these machines before and I know once they start going wrong they don't stop but that was back in the day when you didn't have a choice so you had to carry on getting them repaired because you couldn't afford to buy a new box um, so 175 quid is about the price for a repair and I've just bought the Chinese diesel heater for 115 so I could and that's going to be a brand new one so uh, it's a, a bit of a no-brainer, and we can assume that even if the uh, Chinese one doesn't last very long, that we can replace it for less than it will cost to repair, replace the entire thing for less than it will cost to repair uh, the D2. And bear in mind as well that we also get all uh, like things like the the spare pump. We get the uh, we get lengths of, um, uh, of of heater pipe with it, uh, so we do get a fair kit, and uh, we also get a fuel tank. So, uh, what's in the box? Um, well, there's the fuel pump and its associated mounting bracket. There's a little thermometer that I bought to go in the saloon. Uh, there's the heater mounting bracket. This we don't need. Uh, there's a sturdier angle bracket that came with the D2 and it's compatible with the Chinese heater. Uh, then there's a couple of joiners for the 75mm hot air ducting. And there's one of the directable outlets also for the ducting. And we are at speed. Can we do that again, please? Speed! So, what we've got with the kit is this flexible rubbery pipe, which is really, really flexible, and would probably, once it's had a bit of fuel in it, will go brittle very quickly. So the alternative is this, which is still plastic, but is much more rigid. And that is the pipe we're going to use. This is the little, uh, so there we've got the fuel goes in there, through the filter, into the pump, out of the pump, that's that new bit of fuel pipe, and straight into the heater there. So here it is, installed, um, and there are, effectively, there's four pipe connections uh, that you have. Firstly, and most importantly, is the heated air out. You attach ducting to this to take the warm air to where you want it. At the other end is the cold air inlet. This needs to be led to a source of fresh air, either outside or to the cabin. If you leave it unconnected, it might draw smells or even poisonous exhaust gases into the living space. Combustion air is to mix with the fuel for the fire, so it doesn't matter quite as much where this pipe takes its air from. The last of these larger connections is the exhaust pipe, which takes the heater fumes away from the heater, and this must be taken to the outside air. Finally, there's the tiny fuel pipe inlet. So this is the top of the tank, and this is our sender, uh, and that is the pipe that's going off to, you see it's copper, I can't tell if you can see that in the picture, um, but uh, that's copper, and that's going off to the heater. Now, when we installed it, this is that cheap stuff that comes with, the nice thing about it is it's clear, so we can see where the fuel is. Um, I won't bore you with the process, but basically we got the engine, we got the thing started yesterday, and... Um, then it stopped and we think it was fuel so we then had we had an air leak here so we took that was that was a, a little valve we're taking that out now and we've got a direct connection and that stopped the air leak and then we've used that to test uh, what we've got and we're not really sure why it's not getting proper fuel but we're also not really sure that there is proper fuel in this tank um i cut an inspection hatch here um a while ago so that we could see and the uh, the previous owner had said that the diesel tank was empty and it isn't but what it's full of 
is open to interpretation. Uh, we assumed it was diesel, and now we're not absolutely sure. Um, it may be a combination of diesel and water. But in order to get the heater going, uh, we need to know that we're putting proper diesel into it and that it's getting a good supply of good fuel. So I'm using, um, temporarily, I'm going to use the uh, the actual uh, bottle that came with it, the, the fuel tank that came with it. So there's my tank and there's my road diesel that I just purchased about an hour ago from a garage. So the fuel tank's there and the fuel pipe comes under the floor here and at the moment we haven't clamped it down at all. Um, and we think that might, that join, this join here, may be where the old pump was. Okay, so I'm going to split this apart. So with the pipe pushed down into the bottom of that tank, we just need to prime the pump to get all of the air out of the pipe. Now, this took quite a lot of working out because there is apparently a way of priming this pump and it tells you that you can do it and it says you press the button and hold it for three seconds. It didn't tell you which button. So by process of elimination, we eventually worked out it's this one. And there's the pump priming. So you see how it's bleeding the system there? There we are, there's some. There we go. So the pipes to connect uh, the heater um, come packaged like this, but we want them to look like this. Take it here and then roll it across your chest. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. And I'm lucky enough to have some of this um, insulation here, which can just be slid on top of the piping. For those of us who aren't um, lucky enough to have the Eberspacker stuff, um, I'm just going to use the roof insulation stuff and wrap it. And what I've done is I've wrapped it with some red gaffer tape and um, there you go, that's the whole thing wrapped up and ready to install. So there might come a point where you want to have two outlets uh, and you need to then put some kind of splitter in the pipes. So the, uh, there are two options. One is the Y splitter, uh, which I'm going to use. Um, and then the other one is the T splitter. Getting your ducting wrong will shorten the life of your heater. I had an Eberspacker Airtronic D4 installation on Sea Dog that had supposedly been done by professionals and paid for by the previous owner, but there was a very tight bend on the ducting and over time it overheated, burning out the combustion chamber lining and overheating the fan bearings. The repair was a lot more than the cost of a new one and at the time I couldn't afford to replace with a 4 kilowatt heater, so I put an MV Aero 2 kilowatt in its place and improved the ducting basically making it straighter and shorter. It was a complete contrast to the previous installation. Despite the new unit being half as powerful, the cabin was a lot warmer, used less fuel, and the unit was still in tip-top condition when I sold it five years later. And it's worth mentioning that at the time, I lived on that boat, so it was in use almost continually through some very cold winters. So how can you know that you're doing the right thing? Well, Eberspacker have a neat system for calculating the right amount of ducting. They give each component a rating, and each heater has a rating. When you've added all the components up, if you have a lower number than the heater rating, you're okay. If it's higher, you need to change something to reduce the number. The system is crude, the Eberspacker data isn't complete and occasionally contradicts itself, and of course it bears no relation to the design of the Chinese heater we're actually installing, but at least it gets you thinking about the effects of your ducting routes on your heater. One final point, as soon as you install one of these heaters, you should also install a carbon monoxide alarm. Boats are built to keep water out, but this also makes them excellent at keeping gases and fumes in. An alarm is not a substitute for a good installation, but it certainly can be a lifesaver. So all it remains for me to do uh, is, from the bed, at the front of the boat, um, turn the heater off. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.